During a Senate hearing, Pentagon officials have claimed that troops on the ground are now quite possible, despite early assurances from Obama and John Kerry that it wouldn't happen. To talk more on the issue, I'm now joined by anti-war activist Brian Becker. Mr. Becker, you're live on RT. Thank you very much for being with us. So what do you make of the possibility of U.S. Thanks. troops uh, sent to fight Islamic State? Uh, can Washington allow itself such measures? Well, I think the sign is that the U.S. will send boots on the ground. In fact, they have more than uh, 1,500 uh, combat troops, and all troops are combat troops, in Iraq right now. They've said, the Obama administration has said that it is determined to degrade and then ultimately destroy the Islamic State. Uh, if the air bombing campaign does not succeed in doing that, and an air bombing campaign really cannot succeed in doing that, or if it's proxy armies, those that are working with the United States, either uh, the Kurdish Peshmerga or the Iraqi central government armies or others, if they can't do the job, then the logic is in order to not be defeated or to avoid the perception of the defeat, the United States will have to escalate. And escalating in this situation will mean, I believe, thousands and thousands of ground troops. Given the numbers that we have right now, an additional 500 troops, making that 600, uh, putting troops on the ground, can America afford to go into another war at this point? Well, if you ask the American people, 40 million of whom are either unemployed or underemployed, millions of whom are still losing their homes because of foreclosure, uh, schools being shut down, nurses being laid off because of, the, quote, the absence of funds, the lack of funds, the idea that the United States would spend hundreds of billions of dollars more to send bombs and missiles and, and, and occupy Iraq or to bomb Syria, that the American people, those people who are suffering would say, no, we don't have the money for that. But the empire has its own designs, and there seems to be a limitless um, uh, amount of money and cash when it comes to war and occupation, which ultimately the United States isn't a welfare state, it's a warfare state, and it is in a state of perpetual warfare. Why doesn't Iran want to cooperate with the U.S. on fighting the Islamic State? Well, the Iranian government has not been invited to be part of the conferences, nor has the sovereign government of Syria, the, confer the international conferences that are being held to fight against the Islamic State, even though the Syrians have been the bulwark, the, the Syrian government, of fighting the Islamic State with the assistance of the Iranian government. They've been excluded. Why have they been excluded? Because the United States, even though it says it wants to destroy, and I believe it does want to destroy the Islamic State, has other agenda items, which is to topple the, Ara the, the Syrian government, a principal ally of Iran and of course to carry out regime change ultimately in Iran so they're playing uh, they have a two-pronged agenda here uh, both of them are nemesis for the Iranian government and I would say the Syrian government even though the Syrian government is offering the United States to cooperate it just says the Assad government says you can't bomb our country Syria a sovereign country without our consent to which the United States says yes we can Speaking about Syria, the West continues to support the Syrian opposition groups despite the reported links between the rebels and the Islamic State itself. Isn't this a dangerous policy? Well, this is the policy that has created the Islamic State. That's the irony of ironies in this situation. Uh, here you have the United States and its proxies, Qatar, Turkey, Saudi Arabia, fueling and funding civil war in Syria, funding and sending arms to uh, the armed groups, either Islamic State or those who are cooperating now with the Islamic State, sometimes clashing but sometimes cooperating with the Islamic State, only because of these policies has the Islamic State gotten strong. Three years ago they had only six military engagements. It's principally the policy of fueling and funding civil war against the government in Syria that has given rise to the Islamic State. Brian Becker, we're going to have to leave it right there. Thank you very much for your analysis on uh, the story. Anti-war activists joining us here.